Well, welcome back to Speed World. Welcome back to NHRA Drag Racing from Reading, Pennsylvania in the US of A. Round 17 of 22, the Pioneer Electronics Keystone Nationals. We're starting a pro stock for the 500 cubic inch, 585 pound, 91 or later, two door coupes. They have to run on carburetors and regular fuel. They have about 900 brake horsepower from these engines. And here we are, Mike Edwards in the Pontiac Firebird lining up alongside Steve Schmidt. Edwards takes the win with an ETF 7061 at 195.14 miles per hour. Jake Coughlin in the Oldsmobile cut list. And Mike Thomas, this is Mike Thomas in the Pennzoil car. Looking something like a Bumblebee convention out there. So much yellow and black on the tarmac. Level even off the line. And it's Jed Coughlin, who's third in the points at this moment in the Oldsmobile Cut list, takes the win with a 7012. Still with Pro Stock. Second in the points. Kurt Johnson up against Troy Coughlin. Johnson in the Chevy Camaro. Coughlin in the Oldsmobile Cut list. Johnson Jr., who's son of the Pro Stock leader, Warren Johnson, takes the win, 7.026. And no one's yet broken that seven-second barrier this afternoon. Here we are, Jim Yates in the Pontiac Firebird against series leader Warren Johnson in the Pontiac Firebird also. And Yates hasn't defeated Warren all year long in the three matches they've had to date. Make that four as the professor pulls out another six second run. It's 6.968 seconds at 197 miles an hour. Well, it's a great uh, run that, and Warren Johnson will be facing off against Edwards in the semis. So round three, Kurt Johnson against Jed Coughlin, and it'll be Mike Edwards and Warren Johnson in the other match race. Down to the final four. So, Kurt Johnson in the Chevy Camaro. Jed Coughlin in the Olds in the near lane. Christmas tree lights go. Yellow, red, green, and off they go. Oh, and Johnson goes off to the left a little bit, but it doesn't matter, he's not out of the groove. And it's a 6 a 9 7 0, so he's done a good job there. He's even beaten his father's time. So Mike Edwards and Warren Johnson in the two Firebirds. Can Johnson avenge his US Nationals loss two weeks ago? That was at Indianapolis. This is Reading. Oh, Warren was waiting. And it's Mike Edwards who took the win. Johnson just waited too long. It was a red light foul for Warren Johnson. So they go through into the final. Kurt Johnson against Mike Edwards after Warren Johnson blew his chances there. So Kurt Johnson in the Chevy Camaro, Mike Edwards in the Pontiac Firebird. And the question is, can Edwards make it eight wins in a row? Staged. The lights are on. Well, it's a great start by both of them, but Kurtz made it all up by the 60 foot mark and then he goes away. 6.984. That's the second win for Kurtz. AC Delco back Camaro this year in the five final rounds. There's the win. It was close. 196.6 miles an hour. And Warren Johnson still leads despite losing today from his son Kurt, Jed Coughlin and Jim Yates. So let's go over to Funny Cars now. 5,500 brake horsepower, front engine, 600 kilogram. Shortened rails. They have to have those coupe bodies, nitromethanol burners, of course. 
but no Ron Caps in that ladder. He is the man who's second in the points. He's already been knocked out as we go into round two with Whit Baysmore staging in the Camaro TFX against Chuck Etchells in the Camaro KB. Etchells has had a three to one edge against Baysmore this year, but today he couldn't catch him at the finish line. Both cars made strong runs, but Whit Baysmore wins on a 5-0-3-3, 290 miles an hour. Tony Pedregon staged against Tom Hoover. Tony Pedregon fifth in the points behind his brother Cruz. Tom Hoover and the Avenger KB. These two haven't faced each other this year until now. Well, Hoover gets away well, but Pedregon then starts pulling away. And Hoover's got trouble. That is death smoke, as the Americans say. So who the loses his engine and Tony Pedregon takes the win at 5-0-5-5. John Force, championship leader in the Mustang against Del Wurzum, the man nearest us at the moment in the Firebird KB. There is John Force in the Castrol funny car. Force has beaten Wersham three times this year, the last time in the semis at Indianapolis. I'll make that one four now. Oh, it's a great run by John Force. Well, 5006, 297 miles an hour. And the last pair to run, Dean Scusa against Cruz Pedregon. Pedregon fourth in the championship. These two haven't met this year. Their first meeting is going to be a strange one. Cruz Pedregon, just watch that car. Oh, he's slow off the line. Scusa had a one car length lead and goes through, Pedregon shuts off early and Scusa will go to meet Baysmore in the next round with getting the lane choice. John Force and Tony Pedregon, the other pairing. A huge crowd here in Pennsylvania at the Reading Drag Strip. Round three then, Dean Scusa in the Avenger against Whit Baysmore in the Camaro. Watch those Christmas tree lights. As soon as those greens are on, they're off. Oh, Baysmore's Winston Camaro loses traction. And he loses it. He keeps trying to get traction, but he couldn't get it. And Scusa was long gone with a 5.070. So John Force then and Tony Pedregon. Which of these two is going to run against Dean Scusa in the funny car final? Mustang against Mustang. Still looking for a 300 mile an hour run this afternoon. Don't we're going to get it. Oh, Pedregon goes up in smoke. Rear tire spinning far too much. And Force goes cleanly down the track to win lane choice against Scusa in the final round. So the final round, Scusa against Force. These two have met four times previously in 1998, each winning twice. They leave together. Halfway down, they're side by side. Oh, then Force is in trouble. The engine goes as everything coming out the back of his car. And Scusa takes the win. So Force leaves of an 89-point lead now over Ron Caps in the Winston Championship race. Hasn't really affected the standings. Caps wasn't here. And John still picks up some points today for making the finals. So a lot of oil. 20 foot down the line and the... Safety safaris, they call it, have got to clean up the track before they can have any more running. So there, top fuel, elimination ladder after round one. Again, five and a half thousand brake horsepower, 525 kilogram cars, nitro burners, the fastest accelerating machines on earth. Jim Head going head to head with Eddie Hill. Davis TFX against McKinney TFX Rail. problems traction here there's a lot of oil being dropped and oh my goodness Hill has it he goes up in smoke he never has a chance and heads chassis really arches up in the middle and takes him on a 4.752 run well, Gary Skeltsy lined up against King Kenny Bernstein these two have run 3-1 against each other this season, but watch King Kenny in the Budweiser car. 
Lewis Kelts has had more wins. Oh, and King Kenny goes up in smoke in the Winston car. Just lights his tyres up, never had a chance. So the win goes to Skelsey with a 4.622. Mike Dunn and Joe Amato now lining up. Again, both McKinney's, but Mike Dunn running a Dodge and McKinney with the TFX. There's supercharged nitromethanol burning V8s. 5,500 brake horsepower. Good for 4.6 second runs as we've been seeing all afternoon. While track conditions a little better now. Skelsey did indeed run a 307 mile an hour run in his rail. Dunn hasn't beaten Amato once in their four previous matchups this year. Can he do it this afternoon? Oh, Amato goes up in smoke. The Mopar car goes smooth and straight to the finish with a 4.655. Corey McLenathan in the McKinney TFX. Dan Kristen Powell here in the Hadman TFX. McLenathan in the McDonald's rail. over the quarter mile, 1,320 feet. Oh, the Reebok car drops the cylinder at the top end and the Corrie Mack car pulls it right out at the finish to win with a 4.618 at 307 miles per hour. Well, the top four then, Gary Skeltsy against Jim Head, Mike Dunn against Corrie McLenathan. A little bit of sunshine coming through now. Whether or not it's enough to matter, we don't really know. Made the crew chiefs call it right this time. Got those tyres absolutely perfectly warmed and set up. And there's no smoke from either car. It's a great race this all the way down. Head puts up a good fight, but the red and white car is out for blood this weekend and wins of a 4.6 against 4.7. So Dunn and McLenathan, Dunn in the Mopar McKinney. McLenathan in the McDonald's McKinney. It's all Max here. McLenathan points leader. Skeltsy. Oh, he takes the win, Skeltsy. And he's now taken the points lead by just five points after that run. So that has really hurt Corey McLenathan. Five points behind at this moment. Gary Skeltsy, and it's Skeltsy who goes into the final against Mike Dunn. Between those pair, uh, well, they've been a lengthy track clean-up after the funny car final, so they have to sit a long time in their cars and think about the race. Skeltsy's got lane choice. It turns out, by the way, Corey McLenathan lost his Magneto, one Magneto in the semi-final, that's why he slowed up for the final end, end of the day, end of the meeting. Looking for a great race from this two, but no, there's a problem. Dunn's engine goes at the 400-foot mark, and it's a win for Gary Skelsey, so more points. He now leads 1,295 points to Corey McLenathan's 1,270 with Joe Marto, who failed to make the finals today on 1,205. Skeltsy goes to Topeka with that 25-point lead and a great chance of taking his second championship. It's a double for Team Winston, their first ever. Just see again as that engine goes. There we are, you see it on the left-hand side. He shuts down, he's lost two cylinders. And Mike Dunn is out. So there, Gary Skeltsy, McLenathan, Jeremato, Mike Dunn still there in fourth place, still has a chance to pull back there. There's another five races to go yet, and Mike Dunn could even pull everything out over Gary Skeltsy if it goes his way.